Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. It's been a long time since I've made a tier list, so I thought I would go ahead and make an updated one. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. Okay, so the meta has been fairly set for quite a while now. We've finished the uh, most recent RTA season, we finished the World Cup you know, pre-qualification tournament thingy that they did. And throughout this entire time, they haven't made a ton of new units. They've made some slight adjustments via Battle Frenzy and stuff like that. So the meta has shifted a tad, but by and large, things are, you know, fairly set right now. So I feel like this would be a good time, you know, before the World Cup matches come out to kind of do a tier list and see where we're at. Uh, I'm also going to mix the format up a bit. I think before I made the whole list and then I just talked about each hero. Uh, I'm going to try to do this in real time just so you can see the thought process and maybe it's a little bit more dynamic. I have the categories set right here. Uh, on the default tier maker they have a bunch more, but I think it gets a little difficult when you break it down into so many different categories. So I'm going to go ahead and explain how my category system works. Uh, S plus is at the top, and these will be heroes that are meta-defining units and are also incredibly flexible. So they work in a tremendous number of comps, they're very powerful, they define what is allowed to be played by the opponent, and because they're flexible, you can pick them early. So that's kind of S+. Plus. I think we all know a couple units that are going to go up there. S units are units that are meta-defining, but they're slightly more niche, so they don't work in quite as many comps, and it's harder to take them, you know, that early. Um, also, maybe they're slightly less impactful than the S+, plus units on the overall meta, but still very strong. Uh, below that, we have A. These are meta units, but are more niche, so think of these as your typical, like, decently strong 4-5 picks, you you know, so you're not going to be able to draft them every game, but they are good viable answers to, you know, something the opponent might do. And then B tier, this will be units that are technically draftable, but the stars kind of have to align. Uh, arguably, maybe your opponent has to be putting together like a incoherent draft or something that doesn't really work that well for these units to really shine. Uh, so that's B tier, and then of course we have waiting room at the bottom, and this is for the garbage units. So I guess we'll just go ahead and scroll down here and start placing some units in their respective categories. And as we go along, I might be shifting things around. I'm going to try to explain my thought process as we go. So we can have a Katie's here. I guess she would be B. I think she's technically usable. You could build her as a high ER cleanser. And against some like low damage, like really high debuff teams, she could probably do some solid work. Uh, I think you're not going to run into those teams very often. Uh, Adlai is a solid waiting room. People used to build him as kind of a niche anti-cleave answer, but he's just not good enough. There's a lot of other options right now. Um, I think Aras definitely moved up the list from before. I'm going to put him into S tier. I don't think he's so, you know, oppressive to go into S+, but he's an incredibly strong unit. He fits really well into, you know, a lot of tank drafts in a lot of, you know, standard drafts. You can even kind of like flex into him at the end of a draft if you've you know, pick some like cleavy type units or something like that. So overall very good. If you hear Crypto barking in the background, he's probably complaining about people doing construction across the street, so that's what that is. Uh, Inos, uh, waiting room, never see her. Hopefully I remember all of their names actually, because I think I'm going to forget some of these now that I think about it. Uh, this guy, don't remember him, but yeah, he's a waiting room. Aether, definitely a waiting room. Alencia, I think Alencia has moved up the list a tad, given the changes you know that she received in the most recent balance patch. I'm going to put her in A tier for now. I think that she is a. Let's see, do I want A tier or B tier? I think I think A for now. She might move down to B, but I think A is solid because Alencia is a pretty decent answer into Apocalypse Ravi if you put her on injury set. She stacks up injury really well. And so I think the times you're going to be able to use Alencia are when the opponent starts off with an Apoc Ravi and then they shift into, you know, a DN type comp. Uh, and Alencia is really good into those because she can S3, she can remove all those pesky buffs from DN, and then she gets a CR boost around and she can likely attack Apoc Ravi, you know, very soon after, hopefully before Apoc even gets a turn potentially, and really put a lot of injury on her. Certainly put the injury on her before you have a viable S3 target, right, uh, for the Apoc, so... Uh, I think Alencia is a pretty good answer into those types of drafts. Alexa is a Wyvern unit. And Wanda here, not super usable. I think some people use Wanda maybe into Violets as like a super niche cleave answer, but uh, I'm going to put her down here. Um, I don't think she's great. A Tywin, you know, you don't see a lot of A Tywin anymore, that's for sure. But he's not waiting room. I'd say he's a B. 
Um, yeah, put him somewhere up there. Hypothetically, against the right draft, if they really open themselves up to it, an A Taiwan could still be fine. I think there's just probably better answers. And like I said, this is going to be one of those situations where if a Taiwan is really good, then your opponent probably didn't put a great draft together. Uh, Momo, we can put her along, you know, similar to Katie's here. Uh, I think they, they fulfill pretty similar roles, you know, like healers that offer consistent cleansing. I think a Katie's is probably better than Momo, uh, but you could certainly use Momo. Um, Angelica, I don't think is very usable in RTA. Okay, here we go. Their first heavy hitter all the way up to S+, plus, Apoc Ravi. Um, I think she definitely belongs up there. Apoc is a stupidly strong unit. Um, you could make a strong argument that every unit that goes into S+, plus probably needs a nerf, uh, but Apoc is, is up here for a couple reasons. One, you know, the, the best anchor in the game. Two, she is incredibly flexible in that you can go into cleave, you can go into bruisers, you can do almost anything with her, right? You can do a tank draft. Um, you know, her revive gives you a ton of like late game sustain. Uh, it can really save you. Um, she's incredibly difficult to kill, so she's great against cleave. She's great with cleave. Like just everything about her is good. Uh, Apoc is a very strong unit, so she's going to go up there into S plus. Um, lots of people first pick her. A lot of people, you know, first second pick her, whatever. So I don't think it's a uh, probably a contested fact that Apoc is up there. Aramintha is complete garbage. Arbiter Veldred. Yeah, he's not great. I guess I'd put him probably in the B tier here somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to rank these in like how frequently I would draft them or how frequently I would see people draft them against me. You could still occasionally fifth pick Arby either against the Cleave team or maybe if they have a team that just dies to the Arby revive potentially for whatever reason, you could do that. So yeah, I think that's an appropriate place to put him. All right, so Arc Demon Mercedes. This one is going to be a little tricky. I think she's like on that line between S and A tier. You know, she's definitely like a later pick, but she's, uh, you know, a very strong core of certain drafts. So now I'm going to put her in S, but I think she'll be at the bottom of the S tier. Um, here's Garmin. I think Garmin is a pretty reasonable answer to cleave teams. And I don't think that she's, you know, as niche as these ones down here. I think Garmin is A. Um, she'll probably be a little further down the list, but I think she's a, a viable option in a certain cleave teams. You know, sometimes you just have to casino. Arowell, uh, nope, garbage. Fat Cat, garbage. Acid, Acid has kind of uh, fallen out of popularity. I guess everyone's zooming so fast with Rand and stuff now, it's a little scary to pick him. But I think he is, he's still good. I would put him in A tier. We'll put him here for now, because, you know, he's a, he's a very strong contender to cleave. Um, hypothetically, you can still use him in, you know, those aggressive, slower A draft, or Acid drafts, but. Those aren't super popular right now, like with Closure Charles and stuff. Uh, so I think he's definitely A tier. I don't think he's S tier, but he's probably towards the top of the hay. Assassin Coley, very niche. We'll just put her down there. I don't think she's unpickable, but it's pretty close, right? Kind of the same with Alots. Like, you could use him. He is a book holder, but you probably have better options. Biken is just a Banshee unit. Basar is going to be down here in the... Maybe we'll put him there. He's in B tier somewhere. On the rare occasion you can draft Basar. Oftentimes into like Landy teams maybe, or even into some Dying teams, just because he has that you know that strip and the uh, unbuffable, um, he can put out some debuffs. But there's honestly just a lot better options, right? AOL is basically like the improved Basar. Okay, Basque, not usable, right? So we put Basque down here. Uh, what was this guy's name? Not Basque. Shoot, maybe it'll come to me. I forget. But he's useless. Uh, Bologna, not great. Broman? I guess you could technically use Broman. But do you do you really want to? I mean, he's honestly probably waiting room, but yeah, we'll put him down here at the bottom. Uh, BBK, I think BBK is one of these like A-type units, probably towards the bottom with Garmin. There's some people that use BBK to cleave, and she can work for that. Another set of people put her on ER, and she can be an anti-cleave option, so I think she has some viable uses. Uh, ML Haste, we're going to put him up here. He's another kind of like good niche counter pick somewhere in here maybe you, you just don't run into people that let you draft ml haste very often because um you know they're not picking the units that he's oppressively good into like made chloe um but he's still really strong into those units right so if the opportunity presents itself he's very good you're just not going to be picking him off often briar witch isaria she is just not meta right now unfortunately because i really like her kit but she just doesn't do enough you know 
with units like APOC, like you just don't kill anything, or if you do, they just get brought back, and you just run out of steam with her, is the honest truth. Now, maybe a very rare game where the opponent has like some sort of landy thing going on, she might be good if they don't have a cleanser, but you know, another problem is like there's all these super powerful cleansers running around now that they have buffed Soul Eaver speed, so very hard to use by Saria. Uh, I would put her, put her in here somewhere. Honestly, even probably down here. She's ahead of Basar, I guess, but honestly, I think I've probably drafted Basar more. Uh, Rickerus, nope. Cartusia, nope. Uh, Iseria, PvE unit. Red Cecilia, nope. Uh, Celeste? I think you can technically draft Celeste. Some people use her for cleave. We'll throw her at the bottom of B tier. Uh, technically not a waiting room unit, I suppose. Celestial Mercedes, nope. Okay, so Selene's an interesting one. Let's see, do I want to put her in B or A? She's at like either the top of B. No, I think she's like a viable counter pick sometimes. Like there are a lot of games where you have like Conquer Lilius and Amelia or some, you know, setup like that, and they draft a Selene and you kind of have to ban it because, you know, your DPS are squishy and it's probably on a high attack EE or something. So I think uh, Selene's a viable pick, uh, just not great, pretty niche, right? So we can put her there. Uh, let's see here, we have... Cerise. Cerise has fallen off quite a bit. I'd put her probably at the top of B tier for now. The, the problem is like there's just way better options. It's not that she's like a bad hero. It's just hard to ever justify picking her when you have Pyrrha and you know Ran and all these other ones, right? Uh, let's see here. Sermia is a Hall of Trials unit. Sidom. Sidom is pretty strong. I'd put her probably towards the bottom of A tier. She's like a core, right, of, of the certain cleave setups, right? And she's really good in that. So I don't think she's quite as uh, quite B tier. I think she's above that. We'll put her in A tier. Champ Z is a complete copium unit, but I think there are some maybe cute ways you could potentially use him. Um, if you build him on that, like, nuclear build against Cesaria drafts, I think he can kind of work. Uh, Chaos Inquisitor, I think that's what this one is. He's not useful. Axe God. Everyone was like super hyped for him and he ended up being terrible. Green Charles. Big rip. I'll put him at the top of the waiting room because he belongs to be at the top of something. So Fire Charlotte. Uh, Fire Charlotte's fallen off quite a bit, hasn't she? I think still usable, but just so hard with units like Hua Young and, uh, you know, Hua Young. <laughs> uh, I'll put her into B tier. She's probably towards the top of B, but it's just really rare to see her, right? Certain Certain people probably have their account set up to draft her more, and their pre-band set up to draft her more, but uh, pretty rare. Um, but, uh, you know, she's still useful. Uh, yeah, I think I like where she is right now. Uh, Chloe, not useful. Shoo. It kind of pains me to put this unit up here into A, but I think she does belong there. Um, probably even above these things. Yeah, I think I'd probably put her there. Shoo is... I guess I'd even put her above Alencia, probably, because Alencia is a, a little bit niche into A-Ravi. Now that I'm looking at some of these other heroes, yeah, maybe we move Alencia down a bit. Because I think Alencia fulfills that role against one hero. Shu works against, similarly, you know, into Hua, but Shu can also just pop off in, like, solo teams. Uh, it's happened uh, to me, and it was awful. So I think, yeah, I think... Hmm, I'm kind of torn. These two kind of go together. Green Sid. Green Sid is a very strong unit right now. I think he's A tier, though. I wouldn't call him S tier. We'll put him at the top of A... Um, uh, yeah. Top of A for now. I think mostly just because he is niche in that you kind of use him to speed contest or, you know, use him in a cleave setup to kind of deny speed contesting to the opponent. And he's very, very good, good at that. And I'd say he's, like, pretty impactful in that role. Um, these heroes here, I, I'd say, are all fairly even in terms of their impact. All right, so we have Clarissa. That's a Wyvern unit. Uh, Coley, I think you could draft into Huayang. Uh, but there's probably better options, so we'll just throw her down into B. Technically usable, though. Fighter Maya, pretty pretty bad, but we can put her towards the top of the waiting room, I guess. Uh, C. Lorena, not useful. Corvus, not useful. ML Rin, no, she's just bad. Crimson Armin has really fallen off. Hypothetically, you could draft her. And I think I drafted her literally once last season, just because like I needed an Aureus and I couldn't take Crow or something, and the others were banned or taken. Um, still technically usable, but she's really fallen off, right? Because her passive is now just included for free in so many of these overpowered units. It just seems like every unit has Adam and Shield built into them, so it's hard to use. 
Uh, Crimson Armin. Trizet, not usable, right? Dark Corvus, uh, he's really bad. Yeah, if you're really sweaty at Guild Wars, I guess you might value him. Um, and if you're uh, wrong, I guess you could pick him from a Moonlight, Moonlight Selector. But other than that, yeah, he's not really notable. So we'll leave him in the waiting room. Okay, DGB has moved up. I think he's A tier. How high do we put him into A? Somewhere around here. These are all these units are all very close. I think I put him above ML Haste in terms of how often I draft him. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd put him about here. Uh, DJB, his buffs, I think were pretty solid. They finally did something to this unit to make him pickable. Um, they've like adjusted him and buffed him a couple times now, and it was uh, very difficult to use him prior to the most recent iteration of his buffs. But now that he can do that barrier inversion thing, he's a great answer into Para. And with the Soul Weaver speed buffs, you can kind of use him as a pseudo speed contest a lot of the time, like as a second speed threat. And so you put those two things together, the fact that you can, you know, delete pairs and also semi-speed contest, and now you have a unit that you can pick every so often, typically in like the 3-4 slot. Uh, designer Lilibet. Okay, here, I'm going to actually put this unit up into S. Um, she's technically kind of a niche counterpick type answer, but I think she's so good at that job. And the unit, you know, that she counters ran is so dominant that I think she belongs in S tier. I might even put her above, yeah, I put her like that. Yeah, I think that Designer Lilibet is in a very strong spot right now, uh, mostly because Ran is so strong. Destina, hmm. Destina is usable, but not great. I think I'd put her into A tier. She's, she's like an answer into AOL sometimes, but not always, because oftentimes you're going to draft her with like another cleanser like Calric, and if you do that, it's hard to have room in your draft for mitigation and damage, and so you're kind of in this like spot where you have a lot of cleanse and not a lot of bulk or something, so you could just get run over. But she does work, I think, sometimes. I think I'd put her about there. Um, I, I draft her more than ML Haste, but not as much probably as like these other units up here. So I think that's an appropriate spot for Destina. I think she has a, you know, a role against AOL. You know, they buffed her and they gave her essentially a free Bastion artifact, 60 free res, and that's kind of what she needed to be pickable. Uh, which is kind of nuts. <laughs> Just like a whole artifact's worth of stats. Like a very good artifact at that. Okay, we have, let's see, DN. DN's going to go up here. She probably goes equal to or above ARAS. Honestly, these two are, whoops. Um, these two are probably interchangeable. Come on, there we go. Yeah, I'd put her up here. She's a, a very strong speed contest. Um, very, very impressive, you know, with her healing and her buffs and her tempo, all of that. I think now that they've adjusted the Soul Weaver speed a bit, that does, you know, mitigate her presence some, but I think she's still very strong. Okay, Dingo, no. Dizzy, uh, I think you could use Dizzy, but there's just better options. So she can go into B tier. Every so often, though, I guess there could be a Dizzy game. Dollmaker Pearl Horizon, I think that's what her name is. Uh, probably not usable. Dominion, no. Uh, Eaton. Eaton can be used. I guess we'd put Eaton more towards the top here of the uh, B tier units. Um, there was a fad where like one week everyone built Eaton. Um, I think he's kind of copium, but he, I mean, he's like a big Aureus, so sometimes that's what you need. Um, some people put him on Bastion, like, he's not horrible at that role. Okay, Ida I think is very good and is a huge enabler, so I think I'll put her into S tier, probably here. Uh, I'd say she's probably tied with Designer Lilibet as being, you know, very impactful at that role. Uh, Elena? Elena feels a bit like a B-tier unit. She is a very niche pick, but she's, like, very good, I guess, into, like, Charles. But who picks Charles? So, hmm. Let's see, maybe we can probably move CDOM up a bit. And I'm thinking if I want to put Elena at the bottom of A or at the top of B... Uh, we'll put her at the top of B for now. She doesn't feel A tier to me. L felt could be used, but yeah, like not not very well. Hard to use her because she's slow. Um, is this Eaton? No, this isn't Eaton. This is Elston or something. I think Elson. Elson maybe. And then this is the unit that Logan really likes, but I don't remember his name. And here's Ervalin, who I have like I think ten of in the waiting room because I keep getting him on like the free daily covenant sub, and it's kind of crazy. Uh, Ervalin is bad. We'll put him down there. Fairy Tail Tenebra, I think, can actually still be drafted. Especially, like, in Game 3 of World Cup mode. So we'll put her up here, probably above Tywin. 
Yeah, maybe even above Eden. She's somewhere in here. Like, she's not A tier for sure, but there are some niche circumstances where you can pick her. And I think Faithless Lydica kind of falls into the same category. The problem is, you know, it's the speed, right? But once you ban out a lot of those big speed threats, I think they're actually, like, not horrible. Put her up there. Falcon or Clurry? I think people don't respect this unit enough. And I think that it's a unit I need to start thinking about using more. I used her a ton back in like season three and she fell off big time. But I think against certain opponents that draft slowly, I think Falcon or Clurry can be a big threat because they can't stop, you know, if you can get the S3 off and uh, put that defense break on something, all that mitigation that they built their team around just crumbles, right? So I think against the right teams, Falcon or Clurry could be very good. Uh, I think I would put her at the top of B tier. I don't think Elena, yeah, Elena's like down here, maybe. Somewhere in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Fallen Cecilia. Fallen Cecilia is very solid. I guess I'd put her into A tier, probably. The problem with FCC is, you know, you have Opsig and stuff, but she still brings like a ton of mitigation. She's great against the right type of tank drafts. So I think FCC is kind of like top of A, but because there's some stronger counter picks to her, I think that it's hard to put her into S right now. Flan. Flan feels a bit like another A tier unit in the in the right hands, right? Probably put Flan like there. Very strong cleave enabler, uh, but you kind of have to like be able to support that, right? With speed, and it's probably hard to do that because she has a low base speed, and we have so many units that need speed right now. Uh, Furious. Yeah, he's not right. Not usable. G perk. I guess you could draft, but he's not great either. Uh, I think this is Glen, not usable. This is Gloomy Rain, not usable. Maybe if you're a Kazo. Uh, Godmother, nope. ML Kiwana, I think. Uh, I forget this guy's name. He's the one with the high attack that people use for world boss. Fire Haste, I'll put Fire Haste in B tier. Um, I think probably up here somewhere. Yeah, probably up here. I think with his buff, he is hypothetically a viable option in some niche scenarios if you're a cleaver and people draft a lot of casino i think you could use him there uh i don't even remember this guy's name i think this is helga she's not good holiday euphine uh needs a buff she needs something she's just not super viable she kind of goes up here with like elena you know like the super niche cleansers that like maybe you occasionally use uh Harado, waiting room I think that's Ian, waiting room. Violet. Violet's kind of like, not great. He's up here somewhere. He's he's not waiting room. He's still potentially usable against people that draft a bunch of blue units. Hua Young makes him a lot harder to take. And a lot of people are drafting Steny now on top of that. Those are just two really strong units into him. Uh, people are not doing like the the types of drafts that Violet was really good into, and Huayang just kind of obliterated him, so. Um, okay. Uh, what was this person's name? Like, Ilyanev or something like that? Ilyanev? Uh, great design. Uh, crappy character. Uh, okay, ML Kwazu. I think, like, hypothetically has a role, but he's very niche, and most people probably don't build him. But I'm like, I think probably you see him more often than Faithless Lydica, but... He's pretty niche. Okay, that's like Jet, I guess, Jetch, however you pronounce his name. You could use him for Banshee. That's Jenna, not usable. Judge Kise, like, she's not in a great spot. There's just too many speed threats running around. Like, the Soul Weaver speed buffs completely killed her. She had kind of like a little shining moment there for a little while as like a Caesarea activator. And then they gave the Soul Weavers a bunch of speed and just like removed her from existence. Um, so she's pretty hard to use. Maybe if you put her on 300 speed, but that gear is probably better used somewhere else. Okay, I don't even remember that unit's name. Judith, I think. Uh, not usable. Bomb model Kana, not usable. Karen, not usable. Kwana, not usable. Fire Kaurik, he really fell off. I'm trying to think why that was, because he had a moment there. I think it was like mostly the Soul Weaver speed. It's just really hard to get Fire Kaurik to a speed where he can speed contest and also do damage. And if you can do that, that gear set is probably better on somebody else. Um, but Cowork does have a role in some drafts. Let's see. I think I'll probably draft him over ML Hayes. I think he's up here. 
Okay, Kron. Kron is like pretty copium. Fire can not usable. We have a lot of waiting room heroes, don't we? Uh, Quazu, nope. Kickrot, nope. Kyrus, nope. Kisei. So Kisei is kind of in a similar spot to uh, Fire Hand guy, except the difference between her and Kaurik is that Kisei has like the skill reset. And I, know, I mean, they both have that, but Kisei, I feel like, can pump out a lot more damage. I was trying to think, how do I articulate, like, why I like Kisei more? I feel like Kisei can put out a lot more damage. Kisei can also, like, potentially permahide in stealth with Windrider, and I think is a much more viable pick into, like, really tanky teams. Because you can use her as, like, a pseudo-Steny in those setups. Um, so sometimes she's, like, a, a good fifth pick into, like, a really tanky player. Um, her... Increased damage into barrier is also nice to delete things. I think I might put her at A. Yeah, I think I'll put her into A. I'm trying to think, like, how do I rank these three down here? Because th these almost move into B tier, to be honest. We'll, we'll address these later once we rank a few more things. Kitty Clarissa, hypothetically usable but not great. Kazuna AI, not good. Crow. Crow feels, I think, like an A tank. He's definitely at the bottom. Uh, maybe he's B. I think Crow is a solid option uh, in certain drafts, but he's very niche because Apoc Ravi can injure him and that makes him really hard to draft. But if the opponent doesn't have Apoc and they have a lot of damage to activate the Crow and they have Huayong, he can be an actual okay Aureus holder that can potentially delete the Huayong, you know, like on your second cycle. So that can be okay, because there's some drafts where like Huayang is their anchor, and you're constructing your draft to deal with everything else, but you don't like, have a great Huayang answer. And if you need, you know, an Aureus as well, then Krau fits that role. So he, he can be okay. Um, I'll, leave him, I'll leave him an A here for now, and we'll see where we get. Okay, Landy. Landy is going to probably be top of A tier. I don't think she's quite S, but she's a very good DPS. And Landy's a hero who... Uh, I think you often take as like, and it feels like your only option to take in like the 3-4 slot often uh, when you're drafting. You need a DPS that can't easily be killed by Huayang and Landy stealths so she can hide from Huayang. Uh, you also, you know, want AoE damage and she provides that. Maybe the enemy has a DN or a hand guy so they're going to buff a lot. So Landy is a really strong option into a lot of these uh, super... Um, strict drafts like at a higher level where you have very limited dps options and landy really shines there i think maybe i move arc demon mercedes down to a as well hmm because i feel like landy is equally strong to arc demon maybe we put landy up here yeah we'll leave landy up here for now i think i, I rank her like that okay okay here's man ml crow is so cool but you just can't draft him he's in b somewhere probably down here yeah, I put him there. Uh, ML Crow, when, when can you actually pick him? He's like a niche pick into some Archdemon Mercedes drafts. He's okay into that. You know, because he can put up immunity, and then if she procs her S2, that's going to decrease his cooldown. But he has all these things that you have to look out for. You know, they can't have a Soul Weaver, basically, because they'll just outheal his damage. So he's only really viable into teams that don't have healing support or sustain. And then you also probably need to take advantage of the fact that he has AoE so if they have a Steny or something so they have to have like some AoE thing to activate him repeatedly you have to benefit from immunity you have to have a, a squishy target you want to hit with your AoE and they can't have a healer so like how often does that happen not very often but those are kind of like the niche scenarios where you can pick you know a Crow, uh last rider crown he's okay like sometimes into Charlotte he's fine because she's constantly AoE and right uh, those are kind of the scenarios that you're thinking about let's see fire Lydica nope Fire Lilius, um, she's really fallen off. Some people draft her into AOL, and you probably still could, you know, but it feels like she just gets outpaced now because uh, some of those AOL drafts before didn't have healers, and so if you could bring bruisers and just kind of like damage that didn't care about using skills, then you could just outlast them. But now a lot of people are drafting AOL with healers. And so because those Soul Weavers got better, that kind of response to AOL with like Fire Ravi, Steny, you know, Lilius, Apoc, those types of things, I think that answer kind of fell off and Lilius fell off along with it. 
So we'll put her into B tier because I think her kit is solid. She's just not really in the meta right now. Probably around there. Okay, Lydica, nope. Little Queen Charlotte. I think LQC is okay. Um, a little hard to draft her, but she's good in the right spot. Uh, I guess bottom of A tier probably. You know, if, if they don't have Hand Guy and you need a nuke for like APOC, she can work. Um, but she has to survive, right? And that can be tricky. So you kind of have to build her the right way. But I, I think I'd still leave her in A tier because she's quite good at that role. Okay, green lot's not usable. Ludwig, sadly not usable. I guess we could throw him up here. He's probably better than some of these heroes in the waiting room. Lulika, nope. Luna, uh, I think you can use Luna, but she requires really, really good speed DPS gear. And people are just not going to put that on Luna. Doris, um, she's she's pretty bad, but I guess not not the worst healer. Maid Chloe is going to go into B tier also, I think, but we can move her up. Probably, probably around here somewhere. Uh, Maid Chloe is really fallen off. It's hard to use her. Uh, you know, ML Haste is a strong counter to her. She also doesn't provide a ton of tempo. So like on turn one, you just attack buff, and that's like kind of it. So. With all of these like super high tempo heroes, it just feels difficult to execute Maid Chloe. Um, but there are some people that build their draft around here. Usually, tankier players are using her now, it, you know, as like a reviver and you know support. Um, so I think she she is used, just harder. And maybe we put her. I think I guess we put her above these guys because I think I do see her more often. She's probably up there. I think that's better. Hazel, nope. Maya, nope. Okay, ML Calric. He is, let's see, is he top of A? No, he's definitely like an S at least. Is he S plus? I think he might be, I think he is. He'll probably be bottom of S plus. I think ML Cowork is somebody, hmm, it's tough because I feel like DN, and we'll put Amelia up here also when we get to her, but these are heroes that are kind of like improved by the battle frenzy. It just doesn't feel as legitimate i guess as a hero that is just there based on like their actual kit and not some like bonus effect helping them out nl cowrick is pretty oppressive though like you think about when he came out the units that he shuts down you know he's like the best cleanser in the game you can also early pick him i guess he's not super flexible though he's more of a tank tank style like when people pick ml cowrick they're probably not going to cleave you like the heaven cleave was kind of a thing for a while but that's not really so much a thing anymore. Okay, so I've talked myself out of S+, plus. he'll go into S. He's just not quite as versatile. Um, I think he's up here though. He's very strong. He is uh, a hero that is defining you know, support in those kind of tankier drafts. And he also shuts down a ton of units. Like they have ML Kyro, it's really hard to pick LQC into that. Um, you could still do it if you have like Amelia maybe, but it's tough. Um, so I think he's he's very strong. You know, F10, all these debuffers, AOL, he just negates them. Uh, man, Melissa is a pretty cool unit, but you just can't use her. Okay, Mercedes, do they have a different one for her buffed version? Not sure. Okay, well, this will just be the Mercedes that we uh, classify. I guess I'd put her at the, at the bottom here of A tier. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, we'll put Mercedes here with uh, the other bad casino unit, because that's what she is. She's just a casino unit. Um, she can be okay in that role if that's what you need for your draft, but you're not going to pick that very often. And I think units like Rem and Garmin are just usually going to be better than her. Uh, here's, I guess, specialty change Helga. Mercer, I think Mercer deserves B tier because she's a speed imprint. You could use her. Yeah, but just not very often, right? I've kind of like ranked these ones here, and then after after this row it kind of falls off, I guess. A lot of these are not great, but we could probably move Mercer up around there. Yeah, that seems right. Uh, this is one of the Banshees, I don't even know which one it is. Araminta, not usable. and Ken, not usable. Mort, not usable. Uh, Chacha, I don't know what that guy is. He's not usable. Mui is, uh, has an okay kit, but her base speed is so slow. I think this is like Muse Rima or something. Um, I forget what that person, Nemanus or something like that, not usable. Uh, Opsig is quite good though. She'll go into A tier, but where do we want to put her in A? I think at least up here. 
I think I put her above Acid. And probably above Green Sid, honestly. She's like towards the top of A tier. She's a very good DPS, but she's a specific type of DPS. Like, you can't just slam her first pick. Um, yeah, I think I put her up there. You know, she's an extremely strong counter to FCC and can be a reasonable option into Huayong. Um, can be a good attack buffer. Okay, let's see. Pavel. Is this Adi? Otto? I don't, I don't remember her name. Pavel, 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 Pavel. Okay, he's going up here, I think. He's quite strong. I'll put him probably around here, I think. Um, Pavel is a unit that enables so many cleave drafts. He's so, so strong, uh, especially with Ran. Um, these two together are quite scary. And, you know, he's not like S+, where you can take him early. Um, but he's so good at that role, I think he deserves to be up here. Um, he just pumps out a ton of damage. The fact that he can do so much damage at 300 speed is pretty oppressive. Politus. Politus is a very strong unit. Also, I think this Pol I think Politus goes into like the A category, though. I'd say, yeah, probably around here. Politus is very strong, um, but she fits into like more specific drafts, I guess. Is she as strong as Pavel? I don't, you know, that's kind of tough. Um, I feel like you take Politus a bit later. No, that's not true. You take him around the same time. And some people draft Politus early. Hmm. I'm talking myself into putting Politus into S tier, I guess. She feels uh, quite oppressive. No, I think we'll leave her top of A tier. She just doesn't quite seem, maybe top of A tier, yeah. It, you know, when you get to, like, the bottom of one and the top of the other, they, it does kind of start to blur together, but... Okay. Uh, is this Purgus? Garbage. Pillis? Garbage. Blingo? Garbage. Ravi? You could draft her, but she's not great. Ray? Garbage. Remnant Violet? Uh, he's, like, up here. <laughs> he's, uh, he's pretty hard to use, and he's pretty RNG. So, I, I won't say he's wrong to draft. Like, sometimes you, you have to take Rylet because you don't have other options, but... Um, Feels a little copium because of the RNG element. Carrot. Carrot's, um, let's see. I think Carrot is somewhere in here. She's just, she still has a good kit. Um, you know, she's still a decent answer to Landy, but with all the Soul Weavers and Emil Cowork running around, she doesn't feel as great as she used to be. Uh, a lot of drafts with APOC, you know, kind of invalidate her. She one shot something and then APOC just brings it back. But I think Carrot is still viable in some drafts. Okay, Rin, nope. Rowana, Rowana's just kind of like, you know, the classic uh, pick into SSB or whatever. Throw her up here somewhere. She's like a super niche pick, but she's she's good at that. Uh, okay, Broman, nope. Or not Broman, just Roman. Uh, forget this guy's name. It's gonna come to me, Ruzid. Specialty change Ruzid. And Rose are both not super usable. Ruel, uh, Ruel has really fallen off, hasn't she? But she's still fine in the right setup. I guess I'd put her up here. She's below Maid, I think. But sometimes you want a Reviver, you know, if they have, like, a lot of uh, single target damage or something. Units like Rimuru, she could be okay against. Um, you know, he one-shots the thing and she just brings it back. I think she's still viable, but just not as uh, oppressive as she used to be. Okay, Ball. Ball's a great answer into certain cleave teams, so I think, whoops, I think I think he's in A tier, just towards the bottom. Yeah, that, that seems fine to me. Maybe move him up a teeny bit. And I guess I, I think Flan and BBK can probably go down a smidge. Move Ball up. I put him above Garmin. And in terms of him, like, doing his job, I think he's... Probably up here by Sidom. Yeah. Okay, Fire Shuri. You can pick him, right? He's a speed imprint, but that's kind of all he is. Um, I guess he'd be towards the top of B tier. SSB. I think SSB is still a viable unit. Okay, now, now we're getting into some of the things that might be like good units in B tier. I think SSB is kind of at the top of B tier. She uh, can be a decent fifth pick, right? But you're not going to pick her more often than that, and she really needs to be on lifesteal these days. Okay, Sigrid is a wyvern unit. Senya is garbage. 
uh, what's her name? The Halloween unit. Celine, Selena, something like that. Okay, says garbage. Shadow Rose bad. Katie's bad. Silk bad. Uh, you're not really gonna use Sinji, but I guess you possibly could. Bad. Okay, Solitary. Here's a solid unit. Solitary is A, right? Um, she's like kind of a cancer debuff unit. She's the new Dizzy. And she's also a really strong counter pick into ADS and stuff. I think I'd put her up here. Let's see, I'd probably put her above ML Haste. Yeah, she's she's like around this area. I think Solly is a very a very strong unit right now. Uh forget her name. Spez bad. Okay, Spectre Tenebria. Spectre Tenebria, I think, is an S unit for sure. She's towards the top of S. She's very strong. I have a slight bias, I guess, with Spectre, but I think she's one of the few DPS you can take early, and that makes her very strong. I think she's also somewhat flexible, so you can put her in aggro, into cleave, into bruiser teams. So I think, yeah, I think Spectre is, is very strong. I'm going to put her slightly higher into S because I think she's a bit more flexible than Kaurik and Ras. She can fit into aggro and cleave teams just like DN can, so they can fit into more things, but I don't think you can take her quite as early as you can take these units up here usually. So that's my justification for Spectre. Okay, I guess we'll put Surin over here by the other speed imprint, uh, whatever his name is. Tamarin, I love Tamarin. We'll put her next to Charles, but not an RTA unit, right? These things can go down here. Tenebria bad, all these things bad. Top model Lilica I also like a lot, but she's not a viable unit, so she'll go up at the top of the waiting room as well. Troublemaker Crozet, okay. Here's an A unit. Where do we want to put him? Probably around here. Put him, yeah, like there. Troublemaker Crozet is super good against Cleave, but that's the only time you're going to draft him, really. He's not super amazing in standard. He can be okay, so if they flex out, you know, he's still an Aureus holder, it's not the worst, but he's like your premier anti-Cleave tank, right? Uh, quite strong. Okay, we have Tempest Surin. She feels, I think, pretty niche. I'm going to put her down here somewhere. I think you could use her against certain cleave teams and build her that way, but you have to have specific gear on her. Probably lifesteal, or maybe like super fast with the sword storm thing, and it, it's probably kind of more of a meme than it is really good. Um, but I, I think against some cleave teams she could she could work. Alright, uh, Green Builder is solid. He's probably better than Fire Shuri. I'll put him at the bottom of A, because I, I think he's better than these speed imprints, so he'll go one tier up. That's how I'm going to do that. Vivian, bad. Okay, Silk is solid right now, right? I'll put her by Green Sid, because they feel pretty impactful at the moment, uh, these two, especially together. A uh, ton of free speed for your team. You can have early DPS, you know, early control. Uh, they offer a lot. Um, but you're using them in kind of specific setups or to counter ran or something like that. Uh, Leo, obviously bad. Watcher Shuri, I'm going to put up here as well with these guys. Still really good, um, you know, but slightly different role. You know, you can probably use more in a dedicated cleave team, but very impactful. Probably not quite as flexible as these, though. Okay, Yufin, Yuna. I like Yuna. She can go up here with the other... Uh, Chosen Waiting Room Heroes. Okay, Strays. Strays is good. I think I'd put Strays probably at the bottom of A tier. And, you know, honestly, looking at this, I think we put SSB and Rowana up here also. Yeah. Um, I think that's fine. Okay. So Strays, my justification is he's a really solid last pick when you're doing an aggro comp into players that are taking a lot of really tanky units but don't have a lot of revive on their team, right? So if they've taken ARAS and Hand Guy and Arc Demon and these types of things, and you pick Strays, and if you have your Strays tuned correctly, he's a probably a must-ban for them, because he's just going to delete like their Cower can do a crap ton of damage to their Aureus Holder. Um, so Strays is quite good. Charles kind of goes up here at the bottom of A tier. You know, I think he's used more often than, than these units. But there's oftentimes better options, and it's just hard to use him. His base speed is so low. Okay, Amelia is very strong. We're going to put her into S tier. But I think because of the nerfs, she fell off a teeny bit. I think I'll put her here. I don't think she's as oppressive as uh, Deanne is, because Deanne has the EE. But Amelia is very flexible and provides a ton of value for your team. 
Um, you know, these three right here are all quite close. Um, I think the EE gives Dian a, a little bit of a boost up. Um, and Dian can also kind of like work in a cleave team as well. And these things don't work quite as well. I mean, like, yeah, certainly Amelia could, but I think Dian is generally better. Okay. Rem. Here's a casino unit. We'll probably put her by Garmin. Yeah, maybe just slightly above Garmin. I think Rem is better than Garmin, but... Okay, AOL. I think AOL is going to be another S plus unit, but she'll probably be at the bottom. AOL fits in a ton of comps. You can take her relatively early. You know, some people first pick her, but not many. So, you know, you could make an argument, I guess, that she goes, like, right down here, or, like, right here at the top. It's very close, right, between S plus and that, but uh, AOL is incredibly strong. Um, you have to have like some sort of answer to her, or she can just completely control your team. I think she's fine up there for now. Maybe once we get the other S plus heroes up there, I'll reconsider. All right. Um, where do I want to put Summertime Isaria? She feels like she's fallen off a bit. She's harder to use, but she's still quite good. I mean, I think she's probably better than ML Haste. Yeah, I think somewhere around here. She's A tier. It's just hard to use her, but she's still incredibly strong for what she does, right? Okay, Bellion. Bellion's obnoxious. Um, Bellion's A tier. I think I'd probably put her around here. I, I pre-ban her all the time, though, so I, I don't run into her much. But she is a very obnoxious unit. You know, she denies souls. All the AoE counters. You can put her on injury set, so you can play her in standard also. I guess I'd put her slightly above these two as well. I think that's fine for Bellion. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, not usable, not usable, not usable, not usable. Wow, these go really fast. All these garbage uh, three-star units. Okay, Ran, here we go, finally. One of our other S-plus units. Do I want to put him above Apoc? I mean, they're honestly so close. I think I'll put him slightly below Apoc, just because you can pick Apoc first. You're not going to pick Ran first, typically. You'll pick Apoc and then you'll take Ran, or if you're second pick, you'll take them together. But Ran is like the premier cleave opener, right? And just by taking him with an anchor, it forces your opponent to respond. Like, they have to draft something to deal with him, and it's tough, because then you can flex out, right? And you can do other things. So Ran is absurd, um, and he definitely belongs in the double S tier. All right, let's see here. Rimuru. Uh, Rimuru is, I don't know, I think kind of garbage. He's fallen off a bit. I'll put him, like, down here, I guess. Somewhere down here. You know, you can draft him, and, like, maybe if you draft him early, you can kind of build around him more. To me, he just feels like he doesn't do enough. Like, he does a bunch of damage and, like, steals some buffs, and that's it. But I, I've said a lot. Rimuru is a unit that always annoys me when I play against him, but whenever I use him, I, I feel like I'm not in a good spot using him. So I probably am just not a Rimuru player. Okay, Shuna bad. ML Selene, I think like bottom of A tier. I think you can definitely use her. Uh, I think she works like super fast on the secret sword storm artifact as an anti-cleave. And against some players with lifesteal, I think she can work as well. Um, she can be a carry. Oh, this is, this is probably the Mercedes, right? The buffed one. Where did I put the other Mercedes? Just with the other counter units. Okay, well, whatever. We'll just put her down here. It doesn't matter. Oh, no, this is... Is that her skin? I can't tell. Uh, Shadow Knight Pillis. Mm. Hmm. I guess a kind of down here. Yeah, you probably draft her more than Flurry. She's, I think, an okay tank into Conqueror Lilius. Uh, my problem with this unit is if you do that, then you're playing against Conqueror Lilius, and that feels like not a great position to be in. But she, you know, she works okay for that. Here's the Hawk. I think the Hawk also belongs down here. He's not quite B tier. Uh, I think he's A tier because he really shuts down Lionheart Sermia, and he's a he's a nice unit to have if you're in that kind of aggro Conqueror Lilius draft and they're pulling out the uh, Lionheart Sermia. It's really nice to have Zahawk. He's a solid pick for that. All right, so speaking of the one, the only, here she is, all the way to the top. There we go. Conqueror Lilius, I think, arguably the best unit in the game. That's my opinion. Um, she is incredibly oppressive. You have kind of like two schools of people. You have the people that 
always pre-ban Conqueror Lilius when they're second pick. I'm one of those people. Or you have people who have built a, a significant proportion of their account to be able to play into Conquer Lilius. And like one of the ways you can do that is you can draft a very like very tanky, you know, uh Lionheart Sermia type draft and just try to survive. And I can tell you, I think with even gear, I think the Conquer Lilius player wins. I think if you outgear them with the tank gear, I think you can win. But I think you have to outgear them by a decent margin. And it, it just feels like a very much an uphill battle, you know, um, to, to fight against it. Uh, but certainly it's possible. And like some people, like I said, have kind of optimized their account around fighting her. Um, you could also ran cleave into it. So some people do that as well. Uh, the problem with ran, with like relying on that though, is that some people will pre-ban ran when they're first pick. So they can take the Lilius and then not fight that. And that can probably be pretty annoying. Um, so outspeeding her is, of course, always an option, but you just have to kind of have your account built to be able to do that, I guess. All right, like a bad. Aiden, bad. I forget her name. Wanita, bad. Uh, Mui, bad. Ort. I think you could technically use Ort, but she's not great. Uh, I don't remember. That's one of the uh, new three stars. Okay, Lionheart Sermi is quite solid, so she'll be A tier. I'd probably put her, like, here... She's, she's kind of like ML Haste, right? Like, you see Conquer Lilius, you pick Lionheart Sermia. Um, Lionheart Sermia is also good into Bellion, you know, and other counter-type units. So I think she's she's solid. Um, people have said, I've heard from many different sources, that she's one of the more balanced ML5s that they've released. And I agree, like, her kit is impactful, it does something, but she never feels, you know, overpowered. She's not a unit that's warping the meta. Just a very solid, you know, option to some things. Okay, Piera. Piera was much higher and has kind of fallen down. Do I still put her into S tier? Or do I put her into A tier? I feel like she's kind of A tier right now. She's like towards the top of A. Uh, you can use her, but I think she like works much better in cleave teams. She just doesn't feel as quite as universal and impactful as she used to because of you know the DJB nerfs and stuff. So I think I have to move Piera down. But I mean, she is really fast and that, that does impact things. All right. We'll put her at the bottom of S tier, I guess. Uh, it pains me, but we got to put Bad Cat Armin down there. Okay, here's Huayang. Here's the other one. Up she goes. Uh, so Huayang, S+, plus, stupid unit, uh, just deletes everything. If they're tanky, they die. If they're squishy, they still probably die. There's like this like sweet spot of being like ridiculously tanky where you still live, or potentially like quite squishy enough that she doesn't get all of her bonus damage and maybe have a small barrier and you live, but it's um the majority of the time huang just kills you so pretty obnoxious um has a ton of tempo i can't tell you the number of times where like i've been against an opponent and their huang like deletes my team one by one faster than like everyone else on my team is deleting their units and like their units aren't doing anything it's just like hua like spinning around the cr bar deleting things um they're just like soaking up damage or something or healing her or something like that you know, they're not like CR pushing her, they're not giving her attack buff. It's just Hua, like going around in circles, killing you. Uh, she chews through your team so fast. Um, very tough to deal with. So Huayang at the top of the list there. Okay, Pirate Captain Flan is pretty cool, but is not super viable. I don't know who that is. I think that's Glenn again. Uh, Jacko? Eh, you could draft her, but there's better options. Okay, Arya, ooh, here's one. Arya's really good. I think Arya is an S tier. Let's see, where would Arya be? I think I, I think bottom of S tier is fine. She's good in a variety of teams. Like she can be good in some tank drafts. She you know is like a lifesteal build. She can be a really good you know like opener into Huayang teams to protect your team. So there's a variety of ways that you can use her, and she feels you know pretty strong. Um, I think we maybe move Politis up here too. Now that I'm looking at looking at it. Yeah, I think Politis goes up there also. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we have this piece of crap. Eula, I think you can draft, but she's probably not great. She probably goes up here somewhere. Don't have a ton of experience with her, but just from what I've seen, occasionally she is draftable, but it is a pretty niche thing. All right, so now the only thing, do I need to address the order up here at all? Uh, I mean, it, it's a little tough because, you know, these are slightly more specific units. 
and they're all very good and they, they kind of fall into like different drafts so it, it's not necessarily saying you know that like RAS is better than Politis it's just kind of the teams they fit in I think this is fine um, overall this is I think quite solid I think most people would probably agree with these four being pretty stupid and I think the power level for these is generally represented as a gradient across the spectrum yeah I think that's fine um, Opsig, yeah, it feels hard to put Opsig up here because she's like kind of a niche answer into things. But yeah, let me know if you guys really disagree with any of the decisions here. Otherwise, this will be the tier list. I guess we can just kind of slowly pan down the entire thing just so you guys can see. Um, but yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. That'll be it for now. Later.